All right, once again, I find myself running later than I would like to be. So I'm kind of in a hurry, headed out to the field. And I wanted to throw together kind of a spur of the moment sort of thing because I've got this gin carve that I've been flying around a lot. I really enjoy the wing, it flies very nice. Um, but my man Kyle Mooney down in Florida, he's been bugging me to send it out to him and I've been slacking, I've been busy, I haven't had a chance to send it out. But I'm gonna fold it up tonight and send it to him. So I just figured one last flight. But I also want to do some speed bar testing on it. I haven't run this gin carve with the speed bar yet. If you guys watched one of the previous episodes, we had a little bit of an interesting experience on the Cougar 3. I think it's just too fast and it got a little scary and it felt a little unstable. So I'm curious to see how this gin carve will behave. So I'm gonna fly the carve and Judson is actually gonna fly my free ride. Judson's kind of doing the same thing I'm doing right now and trying to fly every different small slalom type glider that he can because he's in the market for a new one as well as I am. And he's really been feeling out a lot of the different wings. So that's the scoop. We're gonna head over to that park, do some flying with Jeff and Judson, do some wing testing, do some speed bar testing, and hopefully it's a wonderful night. You don't happen to have a spare air box, do you? No. Hmm. Shit, like it's literally cracked? Yeah, I can almost get my finger in it. It's like a loose tooth. It's got a big old crack across the back. I have the tether though. <laughs> now you sound like me. There's not much prop clearance. Like, can I just run it without an air box for the night? That's what I was actually thinking. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> then I won't feel as loud. <laughs> that shouldn't, it shouldn't damage the motor, right? No. I've heard people say like it'll lean out if you put like a high flow filter on it, but I feel like that's not much resistance. I mean, you'll know it. I well, hmm. <laughs> I'll know it when it stops running. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. Is there any resistance with that? Like, there's no foam or anything, right? I mean, it's just. This one actually does, I think. Does it? Christ. Oh, damn. Run it without it. You see, if I breathe through it, no resistance. I don't feel any resistance. Yeah. If I can, like, on launch, I, to I, don't, I can't have it down because when I'm breathing, it, like, fogs my glasses and I can't see. All right, so this is why you always want a pre-flight. I don't know how long this has been going on for, but I just noticed it. Big old crack in my airbox. And one of the things I do on a pre-flight is just kind of grab random parts, grab the exhaust, grab the, uh, the parts that can fall off or go into your prop and just yank on them. And this guy was a little sketchy. So I'm gonna do something irresponsible that I don't recommend anyone else do. I'm just gonna fly without it, because I either don't fly, which would be lame, or I do fly with it on, and if it departs, it can go into my prop, even though it has a lanyard on the uh, the uh, airbox that Viterazzi designed, it could hit my prop. Or I run without an airbox, and I risk that it gets a little lean, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. If my motor blows up today, it will be completely my fault and I will take full responsibility of it. But I have a, another airbox back at home that I can throw on, so we'll be good. All right, I wanna be very clear about this, my friends. I am setting a bad example. Do not fly without an airbox. It could explode your motor or worse. Let's just call this stress testing. I'm doing it for science. If my motor doesn't blow up, hey, that's just a testament to how good these things are. Gin car mobile. So, so carvy. Yes, sirree. Today is a good day for flying. 
winds are basically non-existent. It's perfectly smooth out. Overcast. I mean, it's not the most beautiful day, but it's a great day for flight. Alright, so we're up here at an altitude of pretty freaking high. We've got nice farmland and trees below us. We've got the reserve handle primed and loaded, just in case something goes extraordinarily wrong. And what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to let out the trimmers, and then I'm going to start applying speed bar. And if anything feels sketchy, like last time, I'll just let up. We'll call it a day. But if it feels solid, I'll keep going. Alright, Jin Car Mobile. Oh, big trimmers. Alrighty. Here we go. Get her back stable. She's a twitchy McGee. Up here, but I'm just feeling like how aggressive things feel, and it feels less aggressive than the free ride. Definitely leagues less aggressive than the old uh, Cougar Mobile. Let's do that again. why it feels less aggressive when compared to the free ride. Let me get my trimmers back to neutral. Um, when I picked up this wing from Matt Minyard, he said that basically the trim to speed bar ratio is about 50-50. That means you increase or your available speed is half in the trims and half in the speed bar. I think the free ride is something more like one third is in the trims and two thirds would be in the speed bar. So when you're actually pushing the speed bar on the free ride, you feel like you increase your speed a lot more. got a little action up here. There's some sort of fire over there. We gonna find out today. This is Channel 2 News, Paramotor Edition. We're up in the Sky Chopper. About to see what kind of fire's going on. Alright, whatever's going on over there, I've kind of lost interest. It doesn't look that exciting as we're getting closer. Instead of going all the way around this reservoir, I'm gonna cut the corner here. Nice little damn feature right there. Like, damn! I'm gonna head on back to the LG. I'm getting freezing cold up here. You doggy, I'm cold. Alright, motor's dead. She didn't blow up. The wing didn't blow up either. I shouldn't speak too soon, but it's a pretty good flight. Gonna throw a nice little carvy barrel roll. As she does. Oh, pretty low. I still gotta turn 180 degrees. I'm gonna crash. Just kidding. This car mobile doesn't want to fall out of the sky. It's so efficient. Oh, 
Somebody's having a great time. Judson landed on a free ride, trims out, and he was like, yep, it's decided. Free ride's the wing. Like I said, Judson's been flying a bunch of different wings. Let's see if I can name them. So he flew a Viper 416. Someone's shooting behind us. He flies a Doberman 218, which he owns. He's flown a free ride once before. Uh, he flew the Cougar 316. He's flown the Carve 16. And he's flown a Snake XX 16. And I think that's it. So that's a lot of different wings. And he, I think he's decided that the free ride's the one. Oh yeah, and to add to it, Jeff just ordered a Freeride 19. He's a bit heavier, so he's going with a 19, and he's coming from a Sirocco 2. So pretty soon, I think freaking everyone is gonna be on free rides around here, and I like it. Such a good sound. All right, so we made it back home. Couple things to wrap it up. I located my brand new airbox that will be ready to install. Details on that airbox, the one that failed. I've got like 87-ish hours on my motor now, and I've never seen an airbox fail like that. I've heard of it happening, just the rubber boot that connects the airbox to the carb. So make sure you check your airboxes before each flight, give them a tug, make sure they're not gonna let go. Sounds like Judson is in line to get a free ride. Jeff has his free ride on order. And if it sounds like I'm giving them a promo, I'm really not. I mean, if Ozone wants to uh, sponsor me in any way, shape or form, hit me up. But yeah, I just think it's a really great wing. And out of all the different wings I've tested, I just keep coming back to it. It's not like the most amazing handling wing or anything like that, but it just completes the whole package. And that's what's important to me for a wing that I'm gonna fly every day in a lot of different conditions and a lot of different scenarios. Aside from that, Ozone's actually coming out with a Viper 5, which prior to the free ride, I flew the Viper 4 and I was pretty stoked on it. I was more stoked on the free ride, but I'm stoked to see what direction they take the Viper 5. And it's supposed to be out very soon. I don't think I'm gonna wait on it and give it a try, but I'd like to give it a try once it comes out. Aside from that, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget 15% off down below and the second channel also. And stay tuned for more adventures. Don't forget to pre-flight your air boxes and fly safe. Peace. Yeah.